the teacher shortages, we're not able to serve fully our 1.4 million plus public school children in the state if we don't have the requisite staff, both certified and classified in our schools, the, the requisite teachers, support staff, administrators in our schools. And we have shortages, not simply in the traditional areas currently, math, science, uh, special education, ESL, bilingual education, world language, career and technical education, but in areas that many of us thought just a few short years ago, we would never have shortages in elementary education, uh, ELA, social studies, art, music, PE. We have shortages in virtually every area uh, of public education teaching, and, and that gives me enormous pause. important to talk about the teacher shortage in Michigan because um, unfortunately there are um, people in key pivotal positions even in the Michigan legislature who aren't even convinced that there is a teacher shortage so first of all we have to establish yes there is a teacher shortage in Michigan and yes you know there was a survey done recently by one of the unions that said one in five teachers are likely going to quit very soon. So this is getting ahead of what could be really tragic uh, in terms of public education in Michigan. If we have teachers leaving in droves, it's it's just so important to have the, this conversation because we've got to have good teachers in the classrooms. We've got to keep the ones we have and recruit the best and the brightest because teachers um, are the number one factor that determines if our kids learn teacher effectiveness. It's right there. It's number one. So this is a crucial conversation and I think it's important to have and, and I'm really appreciative that you've dedicated an entire town hall to it. Well, as a parent uh, of a Detroit high school student, uh, what concerns me most uh, about the teacher shortage issue is that our students aren't receiving the quality education that they deserve. Uh, to no fault of their own, uh, to no fault of districts or teachers, uh, school districts and schools are essentially forced to make do with less. Uh, as a result, students are left uh, taking basic courses, uh, and there's often a lack uh, of variety of options uh, for courses for students to take. Um, the fact that our students aren't able uh, to receive the necessary rigor um, really get, puts them at a disadvantage, uh, really competing uh, with other students from across the country. Uh, seeing as though we've all gone through uh, this pandemic, uh, what we're seeing here in Michigan is, is really is us being hit very hard uh, by this, and particularly uh, those students uh, that come from urban settings such as Detroit um, are really being hit uh, extremely hard. Uh, and so uh, what this does is, is further puts our students behind uh, and limits their ability to really compete globally uh, and compete nationwide. I struggled in my life as a parent and as a daughter and as a member of a community, I am truly concerned about the teacher shortage for a number of reasons that actually dovetail with my uh, concerns as dean of the school of education at the university of michigan so my first uh, concern as a parent and the daughter of teachers um, is that we're losing um, you know people who can bring so much to children's lives and to learning and to our nation, to preparing people who are civically engaged, to preparing people who can go into multiple kinds of work and thrive and change society, we're losing those people. And so, you know, I, I care deeply about that, 
both because I see the power of teachers in my daughter's life, and I saw the power of teachers in my parents' lives as teachers. And, you know, for that matter, I was a teacher. I was a high school teacher, and I know how it really fed me and nourished me as a human being and how it also allowed me to be a contributor to society in really powerful ways. And so I worry about losing this amazing profession for all of those reasons, for the children and youth who will be shaped by the profession, um, for the people who've been in the profession and you know really see themselves as contributors to, to have the, the efficacy of the profession really being torn down at this moment is discouraging for all involved. As a, a parent, uh, uh, I always say parent first. As a parent on the town hall, um, I believe that what I'm looking for to happen is hearing some solutions, hearing some common threads for how we can turn this around. Um, one person may not have the answer, but I think collectively we all do in some way or another. We, I think we all know what needs to be done. Sometimes it's just the strategy and how to get there. So my, what I'm hoping is that through my voice, my experiences as a parent and both as an organizer and one who advocates for schools uh, in my profession, I'm hoping that somebody will hear me, that somebody will listen to what's happening and put that together along with all of the other folks on the panel who bring um, a, a different perspective. I know there may be, there may be superintendents on the panel uh, there are people who have been in front of classrooms for years on the panel. Together, I think we can come up with some kind of a solution in how this can work out. We do not need to suffer. Our children don't need to suffer anymore. Our families don't need to suffer anymore. And I, I am believing that this, this town hall will not just be talk, but it will be a solutions-oriented conversation. That's what I'm hoping. Thank you.